Well, good evening, and it's so good to be with you again. And I'd like to welcome you to our Tuesday evening webcast here in Carrollton, Dallas, Texas. Where, when I say Carrollton, this is a suburb of, of Dallas, and so we're so glad to have you watching with us tonight. And if you're watching somewhere in the world that's in the morning, and I did see a few of you that are on here already, uh, that it is morning where you are. So good morning to you. And I know I had a text from someone just before I came, and they were telling me good morning. And I was telling them that it is evening here in the United States, and it's their morning in the country where they were greeting me from. So I want to greet you this evening and tell you thank you for watching, and and I welcome you, and I hope that... uh, You will have a good evening, and I've got a subject this evening that I feel like is very, very important because I see so many people give up when things go wrong or when things get tough or when things are, you know, things are not going right. So I'm going to take just a moment here, and then we're going to get into the subject. And as we get into the subject matter... If you've been thinking about giving up or you've been struggling with something, you've been praying about something for a long time and it seems like nothing is changing and nothing is happening, please don't give up because I know from experience if we'll keep our faith in God, keep ourselves focused on the right things, think on the right things, you know, God will move for us. It may not be in the time frame when you want Him to, to move, but He will move for you. It's good to see all of you that are watching, um, and I hope that you'll stay tuned through the broadcast or the webcast because there's going to be things that I'm going to be sharing that's so important. And uh, I, I do see quite a number of people on Facebook now. Please, you that are on Facebook, I don't want to bore you. And you that's watching on other apps, I don't want to bore you either, saying the same thing over and over again. But this is not just a Facebook uh, uh, ministry, or we're not just broadcasting on Facebook. But at the moment, we are broadcasting on a company or a big uh, uh, Internet system, which is called Lightcast, and it's out of... uh, It's out of North Carolina, and um, it puts us on it puts us on um, many different apps, which such as Apple, Roku, uh, Cross TV, Fire TV, Android TV. I don't even know all of the ones that we're on, and sometimes it's hard for me to remember. And we're also on Periscope. Uh, and Pam, it's good to see you watching again tonight, and thank you for sharing. Susanna, thank you for sharing, and you that have shared uh, on Facebook about our ministry time tonight, and you that share with us, thank you for doing that, because as you share, it gives other people an opportunity to see what you're seeing and hear what you're hearing and to be blessed as well. And I see uh, Cliff Cook. It's good to see you, um, and it's good to see Darlene. Darlene, you're always such a blessing. And Jason Page, uh, bless you. It's good to see you watching. I hope you'll stay tuned, uh, Jason, throughout the broadcast, because we stay here about an hour, and sometimes we go over just a few minutes. But it's okay if uh, God is in it. And uh, I see uh, so many different ones that are watching, Mike and Patsy, uh, Rebecca, um, and as I told you, you're like family to me, and um, and and Greg and Pam. You know, uh, uh, it was so good to be with you guys a couple of weeks ago, spending time with you, and and it's just wonderful. And I see Josie coming on from the Philippines, and uh, I, I thank you, Josie, for coming on. Josie uh, was one of the first persons we ever hired in our office in the Philippines when we opened our office there. But anyway, let's go to prayer, and let's ask God to meet your need. And and as I've said many times, I'm not here for myself. 
That's not why I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> you know, it's cold here in Dallas, and it's come so early this year, and, and you know, it's really, uh, I think my wife told me this was the earliest it's been cold uh, in many of the parts of the, the United States right now in 65 years, the earliest the cold has come. So, you know, all of the things we see going on in our world right now, the, the earthquakes, the well, we hadn't seen earthquakes just recently, but, you know, all the different things that we do see, we see it's just a fulfillment of the Scripture in Matthew 24 when he said all of these things would happen and and we're having disasters and so it, it can't be long it can't be long until jesus is coming you know i was watching a ministry uh yesterday and they they um this ministry had a prophet on and he was prophesying and saying things about our time and 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 then the host of the program said the very thing, same thing that I just said. I'm not repeating him. It's just in my heart too that um, you know it can't be long until Jesus is coming. I know we've all heard that all of our life that Jesus is coming soon. But look at the signs. Look at the signs, and as we look at the signs, you can see that it can't be long. Uh, Sharon, it's good to see you from down in uh, Trinidad. Thank you for coming on with you. Uh, pray for your sister, and I think I saw on Facebook, and I did call you, but I didn't get an answer, Patsy, and I was going to ask you which sister it was, and I see that it's Ann. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I'll be praying for her. I'm going to pray for her right now, and Gail, uh, it's good to see you, and so let's all pray right now before I get into the subject matter of this evening. Father, as we come into the throne room of grace, we thank you for every person that is connecting with us this evening or in the morning wherever they may be watching. And I ask Holy Spirit as we have gathered here together wherever they are and where I know where I am but wherever they may be that there will be an anointing from heaven. There will be an encouragement. There will be a spirit of peace that will come upon them. And you will open the hearts and minds of everyone to receive what you've given me to share this evening. Lead me and guide me uh, to speak words of life and words of truth that will bring encouragement. And Father, I just pray for Anne right now over there in Georgia. Lord, that you will touch Anne's body. I know that she was in this accident. I don't know the severity of it. I just know that there was a, an accident there. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will touch and minister to Anne and make her completely whole. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, Sharon, bless you. She says, Pastor Don, Jesus is coming soon. Yes, He is coming soon. That's one of the reasons I do what I do is because uh, I really believe with all of my heart that God's calling you God's calling you, not just me, but God's calling you and me to be a witness for Him every day. Not only just with our mouths, but be a witness in our lifestyle. Living the life that Jesus wants us to live. Living godly lives. You know, I, I was reading in uh, Corinthians today, and as I was reading in Corinthians today, Paul was speaking and he was saying, things for us not to be doing. And so God wants us to be caught up in His goodness, in His glory, not to be caught up in all the problems that's going on. And I just ask that you tonight will be in agreement that if, if you're watching and those that watch later on the other apps as well, that the Holy Spirit will minister tonight and people will not give up when the hard times come. Michael, bless you. Um, it, it's good for you to be here with me. Thank you so much, my brother, my cousin. And and Richard Harper, please pray for the President Trump. Yes, you know, a, a lot of people don't like it sometimes and turn me off because I support President Trump. Uh, but you know, uh, I've got reasons why I support President Trump because... Uh, 
I, I've never seen a president in my lifetime have the people around him to pray for him. You may not like him. You may not like the way he does things. And I don't particularly like everything he says and does. But you know, he stands for the truth. He stands for the gospel. He wants to help America be great. So I, 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 believe, that's, uh, I, I believe that's important that all of us pray for our president. You know, when President Obama was president, uh, I didn't agree with a lot of things President Obama did, and I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't vote for President Obama. But you know what? I prayed for him like the Bible tells us to do in 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. So if you're a Christian and you're a believer, you should pray for the president whether you like him or you don't like him. And if we had a female, if we had a lady president, it would be the same thing. We should pray for him because that's the Bible, what the Bible says do. Michael, love you too and appreciate you. And uh, Gloria Wilson is saying he loves Israel. Yes, he does. Look what he did. Many of our presidents have talked about doing what President Trump did in Israel. But he moved. He, he moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He didn't, he didn't talk about it. He did it. He wasn't afraid of the press. He wasn't afraid of uh, people and what they would say or do. He went ahead and did what many uh, presidents have promised to do. So I think it's good that we pray uh, as this impeachment thing uh, starts tomorrow uh, that we should pray and just believe God to intercede and move for Him in a, in a way that, uh, that we will see the hand of God in, in moving in, in our time in this whole situation that what Satan is meaning for harm it will turn out for good. Anyway, let's get started tonight and the topic that I want to talk about tonight of never give up. You know, I, I said it earlier, but many people can pray and ask God for things. And when it doesn't take place or it doesn't happen when they think it should happen, then they get weary and they give up and just just feel like that God doesn't love them, God doesn't hear their prayer, and that God doesn't care. Uh, but you know what? God hears and answers prayer. And sometimes I tell people, you're not, or maybe I'm not ready for what I'm asking for. And so there's reasons when we don't get our prayers answered or get what we're praying for. So many times it's nothing but the enemy standing around, pushing back and trying to get you to stop and to give up and get weary but I've learned a long time ago not to get weary when I don't see the things happen that I want to happen and that I'm praying for and I, I'm going to read out of the message Bible here from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 through 18 and and I'm going to start off with this and I, I, I looked at all the different versions and especially with my subject matter tonight and it says here in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 in the Message Bible, so we're not giving up. That's how it starts out. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside where God is making new life, not a day goes by without His unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes. Compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us, and that's talking about heaven, that one day, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, those that their bodies have given out and their time has come out on the, their time has ended on the earth and they're gone on to meet the Lord. They're in the presence of God right now, and, and many times I, 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 you know, we've talked to different people and even our own son that left this world and uh, when he was 15 years of age. And uh, as much as we missed him over these years, I wouldn't call him back for nothing in the world because he's in the presence of God. But this particular scripture is talking about, it's, it, this is hard times, 
These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us in heaven. So, you know, it's not long until you and I, the ones that are ready, we're going to be caught up in the air to meet the Lord. And I was reading the scripture today. It's just like in a, a blinking of an eye. That's how quick we're going to be changed from this mortal to the immortal. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to that day. That day that Jesus is coming soon. Then it says, there's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today. Gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see will last forever. Um, and I want to read this to you. That that Second Corinthians four, eighteen. Let me turn over there real quick and and read this to you in the King James version, uh, because it says it more like this: While we look not on things which are seen, but on the things which are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporary but the things that are not seen are eternal so what we see changes but what we don't see in the spirit by our natural eyes they do not change in other words God does not change and his promises do not change and even though the apostle Paul and many others in the New Testament any of the great apostles and uh, other great men of God in the early years and even now here I sit talking about the coming of Jesus it can't be long until Jesus comes so why would we want to give up you know sure sure you 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 have bad things happen relationships fall apart uh, financial situations come disappointments hurts um, you know sickness disease uh, just like things that happens in politics, everything is around us is changing. But God in His Word never changes. So I want to tell you, don't be weary and don't give up. And uh, uh, my friend Al Rowan is saying, Elijah said to his service, keep looking until you see some evidence because I hear the sound of abundance of rain. In other words, don't quit expecting. Thank you Pastor Al for those those words of encouragement. Don't stop expecting or quit expecting the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know He is coming soon. He is coming soon. And so I'm telling people never, never give up. Even though you don't see exactly what you want to see. i got a number of things I want to talk about and tell you about and tell you kind of where we are. But, you know, uh, Winston Churchill, you know, I, I think it's important what he said. You know, he wasn't a preacher and we know who he was and what he did. But he said, never give in. Never, 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 never. In nothing great or small large or petty never give in expect accept to convictions of honor and good sense never yield to force never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy now I know Winston Churchill was talking about the natural enemy and he was talking about natural things but I just think that applies to believers, if a great man like Winston Churchill could stand and make a, a speech and say uh, in these words, never give in or never, 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 in nothing great or small, large or petty, never give in, Expect, except to convictions of honor and good sense. If, if a, a great man like him could stand up and fight back and not be overcome and stand up in the natural with God's power and God's anointing how much more should we stand up how much more can we believe God you know and I think about in Luke 18 verses 2 through 7 and this was uh, about the woman that went against the unjust judge 
And she said, there, there was a city judge. He said, a very godless man, a very godless man who had great contempt for everyone. A widow of that city came to him frequently to appeal for justice against a man who had harmed her. The judge ignored her for a while, but eventually she got on his nerves. <laughs> I like this. And he said, I fear neither God nor man. I fear neither God nor man. Wow. He said to himself, but this woman bothers me. I'm going to see that she gets justice, for she's wearing me out in her constant coming. Then the Lord said, If an evil judge can be worn down like that, don't you think that God will surely give justice to his people who plead with him day and night? So I, I'm going to make some comments about this in just a moment. But... If, if we can see in the natural this woman coming to the unjust judge. And this woman was persistent. She was unyielding. She was determined. And she, she had nerve and she had, um, she had confidence and boldness. Well, when you don't see something happen... When you don't see something happen, why, why get upset? Why give in? Why say all the stuff? God doesn't love me. God doesn't care. See, what you're doing when, when you do that, oh, I, I know it's hard emotionally not to do that. But you know, I tell people over and over again, God doesn't, God doesn't want us living and serving Him by emotion. He wants us to serve Him in faith. See, the walk of faith has nothing to do with emotions. You hear me say this all the time. You that watch me regularly, you hear me say this. But allowing our emotions to cause us to say things about God or things about His Word. It, 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 you know, when, you, when things don't happen, you say, well, God's not listening. God doesn't care. Oh, He cared. He cared. At the moment you're going through, or the day, or the hour, or the week, the days, whatever it is, I tell people all the time, all you've got to do to help yourself get through that moment, that hour, that week, that month. Think about the cross. Think about the humiliation. Think about the crown of thorns. Think about the beating. Think about the cross. And everything that people said and did against Jesus. And that's one of the things that I've learned. When the battles when the hard aches, when the hard times come, is to just start remembering what my Savior went through and know that He cares. Well, see, this woman that went to the unjust judge, what we need to realize about her, she approached the judge again and again, asking him to grant her justice against her opponent. She had several things working against her when she came to the court of law. Think about this now. See, you may have things working against you, but you're not the only one. This parable that Jesus was talking about, he was trying to show in this parable how to be faithful to God in your moments of despair and not quit. See, number one, women were not allowed to speak in court back in those days. So she had that against her. She was not allowed to speak in court. She was a widow. And she had no husband to speak for her. A widow was often oppressed and taken advantage of then and now. See, a widow or a single 
lady or a single mother sometimes you know that it it it, it was not rare it, 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 for them to be mistreated or for them not to have an opportunity or the same privileges as other people and so we need to look at this when you, when you think about yourself look at the examples that God gave us in the Bible and uh, she was a widow and often taken advantage of and a widow sometimes was synonymous with being poor now that's not always the fact all widows are not, are not poor and I'm not saying they are but many in the Bible were poor and there are many widows today that are poor. The judge refuses at first, but finally decides to give her what she wants. He fears that she will never wear him out with her persistence. The Bible says he he fears she she will wear him out with her persistence. And Jesus makes the point that God, like the judge, will grant justice to the one who cried to him day and night. Now that doesn't mean that you have to stay up at night praying all night. That's not what it is. But in your heart, in your life, you must be persistent in your faith. Be persistent in your prayer. And he said, and encourages his followers to be like the widow, praying persistently and faithfully. See, Persistent prayer is the way to pray. Jesus does not want us to be casual about prayer, but serious, intentional, determined, and disciplined. You know, um, I have spoken quite a bit lately about some things that's been going on. And, And you know, one day it looks good, one day it looks bad, and and uh, as I mentioned, David and I, uh, my son David and I were in Florida uh, this past Thursday night. And there was some things going on and we were getting a text that had to do with the future of our ministry. And um, we were sitting there and, and these texts kept coming in and I had to make a decision within ten, seven, ten minutes. I don't know, the, but, but the window was so short that I had to make a decision. And, um, and, and so, you, you know, when, when you have a short window and it's such a, it's such a big decision you have to make. It's a big decision. David and I sat there and talked and I made sure that I was not emotional and someone was trying to really, I think, take, take a, a advantage of us. And uh, that's what it boiled down to. But finally, I just made a decision. Well, someone called David today and said, your dad made a great decision when he didn't give in. I am so thankful. Your dad does not know all the background stuff that was going on. But the decision he made I am really pleased with the decision that he made. So, I was persistent in what I believed and what I stood for, and I would not give in. I almost felt like, well, 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 maybe I should give in. But you know what? Something inside of me says, don't, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I'm your father. I'm your source. I'll make a way. Don't be, don't be bullied. I was, I was being bullied. I was being bullied by someone. And you know what? I could have, uh, I could have let that bullying cause me to fear. But I decided that. I'm not going to be bullied. I'm a servant of God. I'm a child of God. And I I say, Deborah, she said, I made a decision this week not to let go, but get out of the way so God can move. I have tried to fix things, but I have realized being the awesome God that He is, 
He is much better fixing things than I am. So I gave it to him. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah, for really deciding to do that. Um, thank you for um, realizing that turning things over to God and, and not living in the emotion. I'm not telling people you can't be emotional, but you can't when you're emotional and you make those decisions. And, and we were sitting on Atlantic Boulevard in Delray Beach, Florida, outside having pizza. It was, it was a beautiful evening, um, very warm, as in Delray Beach, Florida, and these texts kept coming in. But you know what? I went right ahead and enjoyed my pizza. I enjoyed my pizza, went right on, and we made our decisions. They made their decisions, and I went on, and I went back to my hotel. I went to bed, went to sleep, and the next day I got up, and I was in a seminar and there was over 200 people there and I was chosen I was chosen out of 200 people I had no clue or to no idea they made me it's a friend of mine that we were in her seminar and she was teaching some things that was very important and and out of all of the people that's much more involved in kingdom builders than I am, she chose me to be the kingdom builder of the year. And there was an award that goes with it. I received the kingdom builders award of the year. Plus I was crowned, I was honored in front of 200 people. And today and yesterday I have received so many congratulations from the people that were there. And any one of those 200 people would have wanted to have been on the stage. And then when I got on the stage, I was asked to, to say some of the most important things in my life that's happened to me as a minister and that's kept me strong and that has kept me faithful. Now, I want to take a minute here and tell you how I am. We're barely on the air. Again, let me repeat to the Facebook friends. This is not just a Facebook broadcast. At this minute, we're broadcasting to thousands of people. At this very minute, we're broadcasting to thousands of people through Lightcast.com. We're, we're broadcasting on Apple TV, we're on Roku TV at this very moment, we're on Android TV, we're on um, Cross TV, we're on Fire TV, uh, Amazon Fire TV. So as I'm speaking to you, we're barely on the air because we've had two of our major computers to crash. Two major computers to crash. Now I need to replace them because next week I got a scheduled guest by Skype, but I can't Skype. I don't have my computer in front of you, and you that has watched, you always know that I, I, I have a computer sitting here so I can, I can do different things and watch on another company some of the comments that people have. But we can't, we're, we're barely on the air we're having to use my personal laptop to be on the air, but we can't Skype, we can't do a lot of things that I want to do or need to do. So we're just we're just working with a thread right now. And I need some people that that watch us regularly to 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 be a part of this. Now don't don't turn me off now. Um, don't turn me off because I'm I'm going to do what I'm going to do. You know, uh, Deborah, thank you. It was such an honor uh, when I was crowned and awarded as the Kingdom Builder of the Year. And and I was not expecting, I didn't think, I was just there to learn. I didn't go there to speak, but I wound up uh, speaking. And, and, and the things that I said in the few minutes 
brought help to so many and it's on a website that you can't see or on a thing on Facebook that you can't see it's an invited thing only and I have received so many thanks from that but let me get back to my point a week ago this past Sunday our church honored us for pastor appreciation day they gave us gift cards they gave us some money and then our sweet Barbara that has been with us so long she made us a a, a, a cake with no calories and that cake had three hundred and ninety six dollars in it I was so shocked and surprised by the cake and we needed the three hundred and ninety six dollars that was given to us we needed that it wasn't like you know that we got money just flowing here and there and but we needed that $396, but here's what I'm going to do. We need two computers, and David says we need $6,600. $6,600 so we can broadcast to you effectively. You on Facebook, you may not see the difference, but people on other apps, I know somebody called me today and said, I can't get you on Roku now. Well, we don't have, we don't have the things or it could be their problem. I know we're broadcasting the same, but we can't do. We don't have the same potential, and things continually change. We need sixty-six hundred dollars. My wife and I are going to take the three hundred and ninety-six dollars and put a hundred and four dollars with it, and that's going to be five hundred dollars. So that brings that down to sixty-one hundred dollars that we need. We're going to give. The $396 of that cake money that Barbara made, it took her since July until uh, the first Sunday in November to make that cake. She had to roll up each one of those bills. And it was, I think, four layers, four layers. <clears throat> and she gave us that for appreciation with people that had donated money. But she labored and gave it to us. Now... I'm asking people, she, she gave us that, so that brings it down to 6100 And then Solly, that I talk about a lot of times from Toronto, she sent $200 in on the computer. So that brings it down to $5,900. I got two people standing by on our phones. If you don't want to put something here and you that's watching on other apps, you that are watching on other apps or you that's watching on Facebook, if you will help us with five hundred or a thousand, fifty dollars or whatever, to get these computers. See, I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna I'm gonna believe God some way or another. And you you say, Well, Pastor, don't you know that's getting close to Thanksgiving and Christmas? Yes. But I'm going to give you 30 days to help me. And so if you, if, you, if you will tell me and you'll pledge and help me, then I'm going to go ahead and get it on our credit card. And then within 30 days, we can pay the credit card off. That's what we did in another situation. So if you will do that, there's the number to call. There's the number to call. Darlene saying, I'll send $125. Bless you, Darlene. You're so faithful to this ministry anyway. You are so faithful to this ministry anyway. So that's 59. So that would be uh, 58. So that's 57.75. Now, I've got Graciela and Barbara standing by. You can call 972-245-0446. And when you call that number, you're, you know, you're going to get greeted by our, our ministry name. But while the greeting's coming, just press one, two, or three. So this way, um, this way you won't have to listen to all the things that, that we're saying of greeting. So when you call 972-245-0446, Graciela's on one line, Barbara's on another line, and so you can press one, two, or three. Now, if you call, if you call and the line is busy, if you call either one of these, one, two, and the line is busy, just hang up and dial 
one of the other numbers that you didn't dial. And Michael Brooks was saying, we, a- we ask an agreement that you meet this need immediately. Touch the hearts of those that have the means to move this very moment. In the strong and powerful name of Jesus, we ask. And um, if, if it's about something else, I, I wait. But when it comes to God, that's something else. Deborah Brown, I will give 100 in a couple of days. So that's, I believe that's 5675. If I'm adding correctly, 5675, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Somebody, somebody help me out. And, and if you want to dial on the phone, on the other apps, you that's watching on the other apps that I can't see, or you see this at a, a later time, I, I, I don't like doing this. I don't like asking you to help me. I really don't. I'd, I'd rather finish, I, I'd like to finish my message that I have here prepared for you. But you see, I'm telling you, we're, we're barely broadcasting by thread. We have, I have a little window right here that I can see, and my control room is right in there, and we've got, we've got TVs and we've got computers, and it takes all of this to to make our broadcast, to make our broadcast, our webcast, go out to all of these places and the people in the world. And here's here's Chelsea right now from uh, Cebu, Philippines watching. And then uh, we have Janet from Dubai and others that I have no idea where they're from. Now, don't leave me. Don't leave me because I'm asking you to help me. If you can't help me, then you can't help me. If God's not putting your heart to, to help me. But... In 30 days, if you can give a hundred, if you can give a thousand, if you can give 500, I started out. We're giving away the 500 dollars. We're giving away 500 dollars. Uh, we're giving we're giving the 500 dollars away that was given to us. We're sowing the seed. And really believe in God as we sow this seed that God is going to open the windows of heaven for us. And and when we when we sow seed out of our need, God always comes through. You know when when our son was um, uh, when our son was killed. We looked in his checkbook. He didn't have much money. But when our son Jeff was killed, you know, he had opened up checking account and he was mowing lawns and doing whatever he could do to make some money. And he was only 15 years of age, but he had a checking account. Well, we looked in his checking account. He had written eight checks. He had written eight checks. But five of them Five of those checks were written to the ministry and the other three was personal. Now I want you to think about this. Our son Jeff, 15 years of age, had a checking account before, right before he left this earth. He had written eight checks. Five of them was to the ministry. Five of them was to the ministry. And we looked at what he had left in the checking account. So when we looked at what he had in the checking account, we took that money and gave that to the ministry because we said, we believe, Pam Pam Crawford is saying, Merle Clowers, bless you Merle, she's saying, I'm my sister, she's such a giver. My sister's saying, I'll give a thousand. Merle, I don't know where you're going to get that. That's my sister. I, I, I don't know where you're going to get that. So that's... No, I, I'm just so so touched. I, 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 I'm just so touched. Anyway, I, I'm just so touched. I'll give a thousand. Then Pamela... Said next month we'll send 500. So 
Al, are you helping me out? I've lost count here. We were down to uh, 57, so 47, 42, uh, yeah, 1,500 has come in since. 4175. Uh, thank you. You know, this is this is awesome. And here's Cliff Cook. I'm so touched by this. I've just asked our board for an agreement for a donation of $1,000 from the Powerhouse Church in uh, in uh, in uh, Kingsport, Tennessee. I've just asked our board for an agreement for a donation of 1000 from the Powerhouse. This is so precious. I don't know how we're doing. I, I've lost count now. Uh, I don't have much, but we'll see and believe God is working through the hands who believe God is going to do it. Um, and then somebody here just handed me a note in their audience here, and they said, don't say our name. <laughs> don't say our name. Um, but we will give $500. They're right here in the studio. Uh, somebody said, I'll give $500. They're sitting right here. And said, please don't say our name. Well, we have had 26. We need 2675. We we need, still need 2675 dollars. And there's my son David. My son David just spoke up and said, I'm going to give a hundred. I'm going to give a hundred. That's my son. That's that m makes him makes this possible. Of course, uh, Josh is back in the control room right now, watching everything to make sure everything's okay. And Cliff Cook says, "We love you and believe in God. Believe the it, the God in you. We can all do something together. It will be done." Um, I got a text from. Josh back in the control room and um, um, I'm not sure Josh where that went of that message you sent me of if so many people would give something I don't remember what it is and then here's Jason Page Jason Page is saying sending a hundred dollars sending a hundred dollars what and uh, Gina Gina, right here in the studio, she's given a hundred. She's how much? We need twenty-three seventy-five, and we'll have both computers. Let's do it tonight. Let's do it tonight. We can do a little together. We can do a lot. That's good, Michael. You can do a little, but together, when we put it together, we can do a lot. And, you know, I really hesitated about coming on and doing this. I really did hesitate. 2375, is that what you said we needed? 2375. And here's my nephew. Here's my nephew. I don't know where you are tonight. Faith, I don't know where you are. But he's saying, I will give 100. Al, here's another 100 that just came in. That's... That's my that's my nephew. Um, I'm sorry. Who is well, your brother? And I forgot his name. Daniel. Daniel's here from. Is he here from Chicago? I don't think we've ever met, have we, Daniel? Well, I've never met Daniel here in the studio tonight. From Chicago, says I'm given a hundred. And and now what do we need, Al? 2175 and then there's my nephew did you get him that's given a hundred uh, faith I don't know where you are tonight but thank you thank you thank you faith thank you I'm sorry Graciela is given 50 wow Graciela you're so generous and kind and serving and helpful uh, another $50 
We need 2125. Look how far we've come. Look how far we have come. Look how far we have come. Isn't this awesome? I know a few people have left me here uh, on this Facebook app, but uh, you know, this is what the Lord put in my heart to do. See, I just don't give up. See, I, I could have not done this. And I could have gone off of the air and said, I'm sorry. I wouldn't have begged or pleaded. And I didn't say to you, I want you to notice, I didn't say, if you don't help me, I'm going off the air. I didn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Because I know God will make a way one way or the other, some way and somehow the money will come in. I know that. And uh, Pastor Cliff Cliff Cook says the $1,000 is approved and will be sent tomorrow. Bless you, Pastor Cook. I'm, I'm going to go over there in Kingsport and preach for you. I don't know when. Not because you're sending the money. But we've talked about this a number of times. But whenever it's time, whenever it's right, Pastor Cook, I'm going to come over there and preach for you. And I know John and Sue uh, uh, got acquainted with you. And, and they love the church, Pastor Cook. John and Sue Pearson have been my friends for over 40 years. A matter of fact, I think it's around 47, 48 years they've been my friends. And uh, they love your ministry. They love your preaching. And so I know God's going to make a way. Let's let's move a little further. Could we? Could we? I mean, I could stop and, and go preach, but I, I just feel like that there's $2,300 yet that, that God won't. Is that what we need? 20, 2125 we need? Oh, it's just 2125. Oh, well, yes, that's right, Susanna. God is faithful. God is faithful. Well, see, I I want you to know, I want to repeat what I just said. You didn't hear me say, if we don't get this money, I'm going off the air. I didn't say that because I wouldn't. Mm -mm. I would not do that because I know one way or the other, God would give us the money to get these computers. And, you know... um, This is a day of technology when things change. I mean, technology is changing so quick. And some of our stuff, because technology changes, my son will tell me, my son will tell me, um, my son will tell me, he said, Dad, this won't work anymore because they changed and upgraded and so there's times that I never tell you or nobody about it that we have to upgrade equipment because technology changes and the people that broadcast us through us, they change and our stuff will not connect. And so um, it all happens. Michael says, let me know when you go to Kingsport and I'll inform some folks in Kentucky that are wanting to be in a service with you. Well, that's good. Michael, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when we go over there. Uh, and I want to thank everybody that's that's committing. And if you want to call on any of the other apps, is our line still open? You can call 972-245-0446. And, and um, you can, instead of, you'll get a greeting from our, our ministry here. But instead of listening to the greeting, you can press 1, 2, or 3. If you want to give a donation and you can't tell me here and let me see it, uh, then just dial the number. You that's watching on other apps, you dial the number. and Or you can go to eoglobal.church. And you can go to eoglobal.church. Um, and then um, God knows we need your ministry. Well, thank you, Deborah. And, and I didn't want to do this tonight. You, you, you think, you know, I, I, I spent so much time in prayer for other things to talk to you about tonight. And, and you know, I love to talk about the things that encourages people. And George Mueller said, the great fault of the children of God is they do not continue in prayer. They do not go on praying And they do not persevere. And that's what I've learned. And in this situation we've been wrestling with day in and day out for nine years, folks. 
It's been nine years. It'll be a blessing to our ministry. And Satan is just... Satan is... And, and, and if it had happened, I wouldn't even had to ask tonight. If it had happened, I wouldn't even had to tell you tonight. I would have had the money. And we could have gotten extra equipment that we need. I'm just talking about what we desperately need. But George Mueller said... The great fault of the children of God, they do not continue in prayer. They do not go on praying. They do not persevere. And see, that's what I do. I persevere. Knowing we had this situation when the computers crashed, I didn't get weary. I didn't give up. I didn't quit. I just uh, I just kept on. And then Darlene, Darlene, and you're such a giver. She said, send in more Friday. Blessings. Send it. Bless you, darling. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, let me tell you about a person and his philosophy. And this is in the natural. Now, now, just think about what I'm. What he says. He says, "I've missed more than nine thousand shots in my career. I lost almost three hundred games." 26 times I've been trusted to take the game when in shot and missed. I failed over and over again in my life. And that's why I succeeded. Michael Jordan. Famous base, ba- basketball player. The famous basketball player. Michael Jordan. I've missed more than... I, this is natural stuff. So if people in the natural can be this way and be successful, why can't we, the believers, why can't we, the believers, stand up in the Holy Ghost and the power of, of God and stand up and rebuke the enemy? Just like tonight, I'm standing in the devil's face. I didn't want to come out here, but i got such wonderful people that believe in me and believe in the ministry and are making sacrifices. And Pastor Cliff, cook a thousand dollars and my my sister that that's a widow my sister is a widow and 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 i know what she lives on i know what she lives on and she's given a thousand dollars and then my my nephew and others you, you that are giving you know but if michael jordan can say i missed more than nine thousand shots in my career I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I failed over and over again in my life. And that's why I've succeeded. So I'm saying the anointing and the power of God is saying to you, whatever you're wrestling with, whatever's going on in your life, don't be weary in well-doing. Just realize that you can make it. You can make it. Somehow you can see the chain broken. You can see the power of God come in your life. And let's 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 get this other what do we need, Al? Twenty one twenty five and, and uh Deborah uh, not Deborah but uh, uh Darlene is saying send him more Friday. So I don't know what she's sending more Friday, but whatever it is, thank you. Thank you. Darlene and every one of you that's participating and you that's watching on the other apps and you that watch later dial that number 972-245-0446 and and you're going to get a greeting from our ministry but rather than listening to the greeting why don't you just press one two or three and there'll be a live person there to take your call now we're getting close to the end but let me let me just give you one more ministry a situation about standing and this is another parable and it's in Luke 11 and and it was about the man I, I could tell you but let me just read it he said then teaching them more about prayer he used this illustration suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread You would shout up to him, A friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing I have nothing to give him to eat. He would call down from his bedroom, Please don't ask me to get up. The door's locked for the night and we're all in bed. I just can't help it this time. But I'll tell you this, though he won't do it as a friend, 
If you keep knocking long enough, He will get up and give you everything you want just because of persistence. And so it is with prayer. Keep on asking and you will keep on getting. Keep on looking and you will keep on finding. Knock and the door will be open. Everyone who asks receives. All who seek find. And the door is open to everyone that knocks. So you see, a man knocked on the door, this parable of a friend. But a friend... He wouldn't come down. He said, we're in the bed. It's too late. But he kept on knocking. So he didn't want to be embarrassed. And he came and gave him what he needed because of his persistence. Folks, that's the way I've been in my life when the devil comes. In this situation we've been wrestling with that I've talked about over and over again. The situation we've wrestled with. I don't even know where it is at the moment. I think, you know, they told me uh, Thursday night, you know, what they told me. But then the man called my son today and he said, I appreciate your dead stand. He made the right decision. Somebody make a decision to help us tonight. Somebody make a help a decision. So, so how much did we get in? I, my brain's not working at the moment on the money I'm thinking about. Uh, We got forty-seven hundred dollars to come in. Isn't that awesome? Forty-seven hundred committed, and and you know you don't have to do it today. You've got thirty days because we can go out and purchase it on our credit card. Because I don't want to pay any interest, folks. I, I'm not one to pay interest. I don't mind putting it on the credit card for thirty days, but after thirty days, I don't. I'm not going to do that. That's not. God doesn't want me to go in debt. I went in debt one time. Millions of dollars. We were in debt millions of dollars for the ministry. And there was so much pressure when we were in debt with all these millions of dollars. And I talked about that here just a few weeks. But you know what? Uh, Another pastor now has that church and paid off the the $4 million that we owed. And, And now they're worshiping in that church. And I don't have all of that. I don't have all of that. Yeah, we're believing for the remaining $2,100. We're believing for the $2,100. Let's just pray right now. Father, you know every person that is watching or will be watching. And you know that we need these computers. I'm not just asking for something that... Oh, I, I got a text here. I got a text here from Lois. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Lois. She said, I'm going to send 500. Wow, thank you, Lois, from over in Tennessee. Oh, you said if 100 people will give 25, we will have it. Uh, How much we need now? $1,625 is all we need now. $1,625. I just believe we're going to get it. I believe we're going to get it. I believe we're going to get it. We just need $1,625. $1,625. You know, just before we went on the air, I had I had two texts of people asking me to send them money to help them in their ministry. A lot of people think our ministry is rich. A lot of people think our ministry is rich, but we just, you know, we just live by faith. We live by faith. And we're rich in the Word. We're rich in God's love. We're rich in His faithfulness. We're rich in His mercy. But we faith it in every week to pay the bills because the Internet costs us a lot. So, Lois, thank you. Thank you for the 500. That's so appreciated. It's so appreciated. So we're down now again to 1,600. Is that what? 1,625. You know, if if a bunch of people would just say, "I'll send twenty five hundred, twenty five, we'll have the rest of it." I don't know how many it take, but you, if you just say, "I'll send twenty five dollars," thank you for staying with me tonight. This is awesome. This is awesome. Thank you for staying with me. Amen. Amen. Thank you for what you've already done. 
this moment. Thank you, Michael. That's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I just believe somebody's calling. I just believe that somebody is doing something. I just believe that somehow, this is, I believe before we go off the air, and, and our time's up already. Our time's up already. But I, I just I just felt like that I needed to ask you. God put it in my heart. He said, if you'll ask them, they'll support you. And I don't like to ask. I don't like to beg. I just, I just know that when we sow seed, and, and we started this off, my wife and I giving back $396 from the cake, and we're adding 104 more with it to give 500. And um, and then Deborah Brown said, "I'll add another 25. I'll add another 25." Thank you, Deborah. So, so why don't a bunch of people right now just say, "I will, I will give 25." Why don't a bunch of people just say, "I'll, I'll give another 25." And, and and we'll get there. We'll get both of these computers. And and next Wednesday night I can I can be able to do what I need to do if you'll if you will help me. You know, I I want to take just a moment and tell you that if you won't give up, if you won't give up in hard times. I said something here Sunday morning. I read a scripture. I don't recall what the scripture was. But many people think the victory is when we get to the end and we we have the accomplishment or the answered prayer. And so I want to re-say this because I know there's people watching tonight. I know there's people watching tonight that wasn't watching Sunday. So let me re-say this. See, we think when, when... when what we got, what we prayed for come in, that we won the victory then. Really, that's not when you win the victory. That's when you get the answer. The victory is inside you before you get the answer. Because you'll never get the victory outwardly, externally, until you have it internally. Think about what I'm saying. See, you you can look down the road and say, in five years, two years, six months, I need this to happen. And when it does, boy, you really rejoice and you really shout. Well, I'm shouting already because of what we've done. But I knew beforehand, I had the victory on the inside. That next week, we're going to have these computers here. So, remember, the victory is not when you get what you're praying for. The victory is inside you. If you don't have the victory inside of you before the answer comes, it will never come. You've got to have the victory and know that no matter what is going on, what it looks like, what is happening around you, the victory is inside of you. You know, the old song, Victory in Jesus. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me. And he bought me. Well, you see, the victory is in Jesus. It's not in the end results. The end results comes because of the victory that's in you. Right now. Right now. Is anybody else, before we go off the air, anybody want to call? 1,600 that we need? I just believe that I'm going to have some people tonight even after we go off of the air, to watch this, to call, or to go to the website, or to send me a text, or send me an email, and say, we're, we're doing this, we're being a part, and we're going to have the $1,600 that we need to purchase these two new computers. See, we have to have special one. We can't just go down to Best Buy and get a cheap computer. It's it's not that easy. I wish it was that easy and that simple. But we have to have these that have a lot of, I, I don't know if it's memory, I don't know if it's gigabytes, I don't know what it is, but it takes so much, and these are very expensive, and they cost more. I just, as I said, I wish we could go down and just get one of those cheap ones and, and make it work for a while. We would. Michael said, I'm sending 25. Bless you, cousin. Thank you for that. 
So that's 1575. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. 1575. We're almost there. We're almost there. Well, let me pray with you. Let me pray with you because I'm not going to spend any more time asking because I I just want you to know that the victory is inside of you. And I don't want you to give up on your situation. I really appreciate, uh, Deborah, let me go back and see if I can see what you said. Um, I don't know if I can go that, uh, if you'll bear with me just a moment. I, I can't remember what she said. Um, I made a, a, a viable, I made a viable decision this week. Not to let go, but get out of the way so God can move. I have tried to fix things, but I have realized, being the awesome God that He is, He is much better at fixing things than I am. So I gave it to Him. So Deborah, here's what you did. Here's what you did. You realized you may not have thought of it in the way I'm saying it now. But here's what you did, Deborah. You got the victory inside, even though you don't have the evidence or the proof of the answer other than faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence or the proof of things not seen. So you got the victory, Deborah, on the inside. You see the answer done, even though it may be chaos around you. Even though it may be worse than it was, and all of your fixing and all of your reasoning and everything you were doing, you, you, I mean, it was good heart. Intentions were good and everything you was trying to fix, but you gave it to the Lord and you got the victory on the inside. And now you're going to start seeing results because the results comes from the victory inside you. Amen. Yes, bring me that box. Bring me that box. Uh, Cliff Cook. Uh, here's Cliff Cook. Already the church has given a thousand. But Cliff Cook is saying, Pastor Cliff Cook from over in Kingsport, Tennessee, two hundred dollars from my personal account. Wow. How much? Thirteen seventy-five. Look how close we are. Thirteen seventy-five. Thirteen seventy-five. We're down to. That's awesome. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Now here's. Oh, this box is getting really heavy. Wow. I used to pick it up and it's real light, but this is prayer requests that have come in uh, from all over the world. This is prayer requests that has come in from all over the world. Father, you see every person. And every need that's represented in this box. People that have sent emails, letters, financial needs, emotional needs, financial needs. Again, I'm saying it. Marriages, healing for people's bodies, deliverance, breakthroughs. Father, in the name of Jesus, I send the word of healing. I send the word of deliverance. And help them to get the victory inside of them. Help them to get the victory inside of them so they can have the victory to answer prayer. God, we know that when Daniel was put in the lion's den, he did not fear and he was not afraid. And he knew that you would be with him when he was put in the den of lions. And when the king came the next morning and said, Oh, Daniel... And Daniel said, Live forever, King. Daniel had the victory before he went into the den of lions. If he had not had the victory before he went into the den of lions, the lions would have killed him. Father, we realize these things. Help every person that's watching now and will watch later and all of the other apps. That the Holy Spirit will flood their hearts and their lives and meet all of their needs in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 
Michael Brooks, another $25 just sent by a friend. Thank you, thank you. Another $25 just sent by a friend. Thank you. Well, you know, this has been quite a night. This has been quite a night. I've, I've never done this on our webcast. I've asked for offerings, but I've never done anything like I've done tonight. And I want you to know I'm not apologizing for what I did. And we have results. But I had the victory before I came. I had the victory inside of me. I saw it before I came. And I just knew that somehow God was going to speak to people. And you know what? I'm believing that that next Tuesday when I come, I'm going to give you an answer. I'm going to have a new computer. We're going to have a new computers in there. And, and we'll be able to do what we need to do. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Let's just give God, Father, I thank you for meeting the needs of all the people and everyone that's sowing. Everyone that's sowing. And Lord, these widows that are sowing. I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that these widows that are sowing, along with all the others that are sowing, you'll open the windows of heaven. You'll open the windows of heaven. And these here in the studio and and, and my brother here, Danny, Danny, Danny from Chicago that I've never met. Uh, I, I've never met Danny. Walked in the studio tonight from Chicago and saying I'll give $100. Sitting here tonight, I've never met him until right before we went on the air. He came in the, the chapel here. I just need to deposit my birthday money. We'll send $25. Uh, Susanna. Thank you, Susanna. Um, Anyway, it's time to go. We're over time. And I think I'm just going to plan sometime soon to have a two-hour webcast so that we could just spend time together. Huh? I didn't say that one. Della, she just called. Well, thank you, Della. Uh, Della for calling in and, and making $25. So I just know it's going to happen. I just know it's going to happen. Michael just called and gave his. Okay. All right. And 1,300 left and we're done. 1,300 left and we're done. And we, we started out with 66. 67 we started out with, 6,700, and now we're down to 1,300, wow, and you know, as I said, Solly uh, from Toronto, she gave, she started out by giving 200, she gave 100 last week and 100 before, and she sent me a text, and she said, I can't be watching tonight, and so, anyway, she's a part, and I thank God for every one of you that have sown and I just believe you're going to be rewarded many many times along with my family we're going to be rewarded David and Gina and, and the ones here that has asked not to their names to be mentioned of 500 and Lois and on and on my sister everybody that's given whatever it's 200 100 my uh, Cliff Cook uh, between him and his church twelve hundred dollars isn't that awesome isn't that awesome Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for meeting the needs of the people. I thank you for breakthrough in their lives. I thank you for their lost loved ones coming to Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that there's change in their families. I thank you that there's change in their relationships. People that need jobs. God, you're giving them jobs. You're ministering to them. You're making a way where there is no way. And I give you praise. And I give you thanks for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Jason, I don't know if you're still with me or not, but I, I just met Jason uh, Sunday. He, he said, I'll give $100, Jason Page. He said, uh, and I met him at a Starbucks. He called me, and he's a minister. He said, I've known you. He's 46. He, he said, I've known you since I was three years of age. I, I don't know him, 
but he said, I've known you since I was three years of age. Can you imagine? And he said, I've known you for 43, 46 years, 40, 40, well, he's 46 years of age. He said, I've known you since I was 43, but I'd never met him, never knew he existed and just recently. And uh, he can't, oh, you're still here. Uh, he said, I'm still here. Uh, we, we, we were at Starbucks. He said, uh, uh, you know, and you know, I never did get to pray for you, Jason. We got to talking about other things, and he wanted me to pray with him, and I never did get to pray with you. But I prayed for you when I got home. Jason, I prayed for you when I got home. So who knows how God is going to bring things together and who he's going to use. Um, who, who knows what God is going to do? I got the victory on the inside. Get the victory on the inside. I can't stop. I can't stop. I know it's time to stop. But I want you to get this revelation that the victory comes inside first. See, so many times, well, we're going to get the victory. We're going to get the victory. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. No, the victory is in us. You keep the victory. You keep your head up. You stay strong. You stay bold. You don't get weary. You don't let the devil beat you up. You don't let the devil say, cause you to say things out of your mouth. Sometimes you might have a bad thought, but put your hand over your mouth and don't say it. Don't get it out so the devil can hear it. The devil doesn't know what you think. Only God knows what you think. The devil only knows what you say. So don't give him something to talk about. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Is that good? <laughs> good preaching? <laughs> well, it's time to go. Well, uh, I'll be here Sunday morning. I'll be preaching Sunday morning. I'm going to be here next Tuesday night. So God bless you. I love you. Thank you for your support. And I believe when we come on the air Tuesday night, I'm going to give a good report of God supplying all of the needs. I believe God's talking to people, people that will watch later. Hi, Lori. It's good to see you. And thank God for what He's done in your life. Lori, bless you, dear. She's saying, I'll give $25. I'll give $25. I've known Lori since she's a little girl. I've known Lori since she's a little girl. And, uh, and, and Lori, you know, Grew up and then she had some hard times. But you know what? Lori's walking in victory. Thank you. Thank you, God, for Lori walking in victory. And then my father-in-law came off a dialysis today. He's healed. Uh, and, and, and I want to rejoice with you, Lori. Thank you for the $25. You're such a blessing. I pray for you all the time. I know you don't know it, but I pray for you all the time. You're just like a, a daughter to me. And I thank God for it blessing you and your mother your mother is absolutely just incredible and happy birthday to your mother yesterday uh, uh, she turned 79 years of age 79 years of age bless you uh, your mother uh, Judy be blessed well here I am I'm still going people are still watching so I gotta go good night good morning wherever you're watching from have a great day, have a great night, and get some sleep tonight. I am. Bless you.